Lieutenant Colonel Brian Bishop. I'm the 1999 Thunderbird Commander Leader. This is my second year with the Thunderbirds. The officers on the team serve a two-year tour and the enlisted on the team serve a three-year tour. And I have about 130 enlisted members on the team and 12 officers. The United States Air Force Thunderbirds were started back in 1953 when we were trying to give the American public credibility in jet aviation. And it has since evolved into a, one of the nation's premier demonstration teams. Thunderbirds check. Hip, three, four, five, six. Smoke on, ready now. Smoke up, ready now. Thunderbirds, release brakes, ready now. Burners, now. Looking back at the runway, the lead solo, Major Malfer, will lift off, put wheels in the well, and execute an immediate 360-degree aileron roll. Taking off now is the opposing solo, Major Dean Wright. Ladies and gentlemen, America's own, your United States Air Force Air Demonstration Team, the Thunderbirds. Watch as each pilot smoothly transitions from trail formation back to form the Thunderbird Diamond. Now look to your right and to your left. Here comes Thunderbirds 5 and 6, our solo pilots. Let's watch as each pilot performs a crisp four-point roll while crossing exactly at show center. From behind and to the right, your 1999 Thunderbirds diamond pass in review. Watch as Major Wright uses precise control inputs to demonstrate the F-16's slow speed agility with the slow roll. This is the Lockheed Martin F-16 Fighting Falcon. It is a stock F-16 right off the floor of Lockheed Martin. We've made a, a few minor modifications to the airplane for the demonstration. Obviously the beautiful red, white, and blue paint scheme that we have here. We've also removed the gun from the back of the airplane there and replaced it with a smoke oil drum so that we can uh, generate smoke for our demonstration. And as you'll see here, we have our flag panel, which shows the 59 different foreign countries that the Thunderbirds have flown in. Plus, we have the POW MIA flag, 96 Olympic flag, and United Nations flag. Look to your left once again, this time for the diamond formation and the graceful diamond roll. tell you a little bit about flying this airplane here. You've got 27,000 pounds of thrust in this Pratt & Whitney engine here. Absolutely amazing. Watch for the mirror image as our two solo pilots, Dean and Dennis, teamed up for the Calypso Pass. The responsiveness of the airplane, the power behind it, the roll rate, the roll authority is absolutely incredible. Major Wright will perform four maximum performance aileron rolls. Check your watch as Dean rolls four times in just six seconds. I'd like to show you my office here in the uh, F-16. What you'll see inside is over 200 switches that are set by the pilot before we take off. Pretty much everything that I need to do with the aircraft is done through the stick and throttle, the switches on the stick and throttle, and the switches up here in the upfront controls. First, we'll take a look at the F-16 stick. This is a fly-by-wire aircraft, which means the stick only moves about a quarter of an inch. What it does is it senses a pressure on the stick instead of a control displacement and then translates that to the flight, uh, flight control surfaces. The throttle here, it controls the 27,000 pounds of thrust available in this Pratt & Whitney engine. I can go back here from idle position all the way up here to max afterburner and burn probably close to 60,000 pounds of fuel per hour. Your lead solo, Thunderbird 5, upside down in a high speed inverted pass. The F-16 is one of the first airplanes that the Air Force actually was involved in some human factors engineering. Basically meaning let's set the cockpit up so that it is ergonomically feasible for the pilot. Everything is within my view, and the way the checklist moves, it's a nice, smooth, flowing motion from one side of the cockpit to the other. It was pretty overwhelming, my first flight in the aircraft, uh, looking at all the switches and knobs and thinking that I'm going to have to be able to know how all this stuff works in, in a six-month period. But I'll tell you what, it is absolutely well-designed. It is a, a wonderful piece of machinery. It's very, very comfortable to fly, and it, it's just a wonderful toy. Ladies and gentlemen, look straight ahead and hold on to your hats. Coming directly towards you are two solo pilots with the breathtaking crossover break. To 
keep these beautiful airplanes clean. We go through about 35 gallons of Windex a week. I don't think you'll find a speck of uh, dust on this airplane. Inbound from your right, the Thunderbird Diamond gear down and flaps down. Above them in hot pursuit, Thunderbird 5. His job is to overtake the formation right in front of you. Timing here is critical, so let's watch him do it. On the Thunderbirds, we basically have two seasons. We have the show season, which goes from the middle of March to the middle of November, where we're gone every weekend. Our training season lasts from the middle of November to the middle of March, where we go through 100 sorties to train a new demonstration team. And in each team, we train about half the demonstration every year. So we're always replacing about three guys on the six demonstration pilots. We were going through the training season my first year, and, and the first time we went through a show sequence from beginning to end, uh, was a real sense of accomplishment for me. Uh, it was very difficult for me to learn how to fly and talk at the same time because for us to make it look like a flat plate in the formation, I tell them what I'm going to do before I do it. I, if I want to turn left, I'll say left turn and start the roll on the Tia turn. And now let's listen as Colonel Bishop calls the roll. Stop, ready, now they roll. Additionally, now I'm trying to keep track of the two solo pilots and trying to keep track of the timing for the entire demonstration. Uh, it's a major milestone for any commander leader and, and any team when the first Delta formation flies together. Our two solo pilots join the Diamond to form the famous Thunderbird six-ship Delta. The series of Delta maneuvers that follow have special meaning for all Thunderbirds because in them are found that special pride in performance and a commitment to excellence that has made the United States Air Force and those who serve in it the very best in the world. And now, ladies and gentlemen, dedicated to the combat warriors here in the 104th Fighter Wing, your 1999 Thunderbird Delta Pass in review. As Colonel Bishop rolls 360 degrees, watch as all five wingmen maintain their precise formation positions. This team grows together like a family like you can't even imagine. When we're gone on the road about 200 to 250 days out of the year, a lot of times we spend more time with team members than we do our own family. So the esprit de corps that is demonstrated on this team is just like the esprit de corps that we have out the United States Air Force. The whole Air Force is a big family. Colonel Bishop is once again repositioning the Delta. As they enter directly in front of you, watch as they pull up into the vertical. And my dad was a large inspiration as to why I wanted to join the Air Force. Also, when I was in the third grade, I first saw the Thunderbirds perform in the F-4. And it was at that time I decided that I wanted to fly jet aircraft. And now I'm living my dream. Perhaps no single maneuver is more closely identified with the Thunderbirds than the one you are about to see. A high bomb burst. Now watch as each aircraft races to the spot where the bomb burst began. With closure rates approaching 1,200 miles an hour, the challenge now is for each Thunderbird to get to the Bomber's crossover point at exactly the same time. Let's go back inside the cockpit of the Thunderbird Diamond as they prepare to make the cross. Bye bye. Eight down. Six down. Two, one, two. Visual three. Got you one. get an adrenaline rush and that rush is carried all the way throughout the demonstration such that when you get done with the demonstration you're absolutely completely emotionally and physically exhausted and I'll tell you what sometimes the last thing you want to do is go meet the crowd but yet that is the best part about this job getting out there on the crowd line going to the autograph line seeing those little boys and little girls and the, uh, the sparkle in their eyes that is what we're about and that really just picks you up there you go this one too you know, as a kid uh, I was always coming to air shows and I think it's what motivated me to end up doing something like this and to actually be able to give something back and uh, come to air shows and motivate people, uh, you know, it's kind of full circle for me. Freedom isn't free. It takes a lot of people in the service who are willing to make a commitment. The whole service is made up of givers and uh, freedom is something that a lot of people in the United States take for granted. And I think once they take a look at the sacrifices that a lot of these people make, they'll, they'll realize that freedom really isn't free theme here at Westfield is a celebration of freedom and I can't think of a better way than to bring the airplanes here, airplanes that were you know just a few months ago over in Saudi Arabia, you know airplanes that have been all over the world. Recently we've been in the Gulf and we would also been into Kosovo uh, defending our freedoms 
and our rights around the world. And uh, it's, it's kind of fun to come out here and show the, the general populace what we do and how we do it. That's what we really do for a living. Uh, besides flying air shows, uh, that's what we're out there doing every single day, keeping our country free.